A lot of people in the Linux sphere like to talk about how terrible Microsoft is, but right now, Apple is doing some things that are unquestionably worse. So we have this blog post here by a guy called Jeffrey Paul called Your Computer Isn't Yours. Now, this might sound hyperbolic, but as you're going to see as we read this, it's really not hyperbolic. So it's here, it's happened, did you notice? I'm speaking, of course, of the world that Richard Stallman predicted in 1997, the one Cory Doctorow also warned us about. On modern versions of macOS, you simply can't power on your computer, launch a text editor or ebook reader, and write or read without a log of your activity being transmitted and stored. So, Apple is actually keeping track of every single app you open up on your system, but if that wasn't bad enough, it actually gets worse from there. Because I expect Windows 10 to be doing the exact same thing, but at least Windows 10 doesn't do this next thing. So it turns out that in the current version of macOS, the OS sends to Apple a hash, a unique identifier of each and every program you run. When you run it, and lots of people didn't realize this because it's silent and invisible and it fails instantly and gracefully when you're not online. So if you just don't have a Wi-Fi connection, it's going to be fine. It'll just work perfectly fine. But if you do have an internet connection of some sort and the servers get really slow, it's possible that it won't actually hit the fail fast code path and then it will stop your apps from actually being able to launch. So not only is Apple keeping track of everything that you open, if it can't connect to their servers, your apps just might not work. And this isn't just a theoretical problem that could happen because it's already happened. So we have this Twitter post here by a guy called Lapcat Software. So, hey, Apple users, if you're now experiencing hangs launching apps on the Mac, I figured out the problem using Little Snitch. Little Snitch is basically a firewall program for your Mac. So it's trust D connecting to ocsp.apple.com, denying that connection fixes it because OCSP is a soft fault. Disconnecting the internet also fixes the problem as well. So if you don't ever connect to that server, the problem is going to go away because it's going to think you just don't have an internet connection. But if it tries to and it fails, well, you've basically got yourself a multiple thousand dollar brick. Okay, so all of that sounds pretty bad. What's actually being sent across this connection? So because it does this using the internet, the server sees your IP, of course, and knows what time the request came in. An IP address allows for course city level and ISP level geolocation and allows for a table that has the following heading. So date, time, computer, ISP, city, state, and the application hash. Apple or anyone else can, of course, calculate these hashes for common programs, everything in the App Store, Creative Cloud, Tor Browser, cracking reverse engineering tools, basically any application you're going to run on your system. This means that Apple knows when you're at home, when you're at work, what apps you open there and how often. They know when you open from here over at a friend's house on their Wi-Fi and they know when you open tour browse in a hotel on a trip to another city. Now, all of that sounds pretty bad, but if Apple cared about security, at least only Apple would have this information. But it gets worse from there. So who cares, I hear you asking, and a lot of people made the exact same argument when Windows 10 came out as well. They were saying, oh, I'm not doing anything bad on my Windows computer, why should I care if Microsoft can see anything, or I'm not doing anything bad with my Facebook account, why should I care if Facebook is tracking every single action I do? The reason why you should care is because, as we can see here, it's not just Apple that's going to have this information. So these OCSP requests are transmitted unencrypted. Everyone who can see the network can see these, including your ISP and anyone who has tapped their cables. Obviously, if you also connect to, say, public Wi-Fi, everything you do on your Mac can basically be seen on the network. And anyone who knows what they're doing can very easily get that information. And if you say, know where all of the access points are located in a building, you can very quickly pinpoint someone's location down and do some pretty nasty things to them. So if all of that wasn't bad enough, Apple isn't even spinning up their own service to do all of this. They're actually going through a third-party CDN called Akamai. Now, I don't know if Akamai is a completely reputable company or anything like that. Let's just assume they are the most reputable CDN to ever exist, and they're never going to have a data leak. Why does a third party need to have this information? I guarantee that Apple has the technical know-how and the money to spin up their own service to do this, and if they really cared about keeping this information secure, that's what they'd go and do. 
So this list has three points on it, and the last point isn't really that bad. So since 2012, Apple is a partner in the US military intelligence community's PRISM spying program, which grants the US federal police and military unfettered access to this information without a warrant anytime they ask for it. So in the first half of 2019, they did this over 18,000 times and another 17,500 times in the second half of 2019. And who knows how many times they've done it in 2020. So yeah, you know, that's not really that big of a deal. It's just that the US government has complete access to all of this information. What's to worry about there? This data amounts to a tremendous trove of data about your life and habits and allows someone possessing all of it to identify your movement and activity patterns. For some people, this can even pose a physical danger to them. And Apple can't even be bothered to do the bare minimum of security and at least encrypt it. Even with some just meaningless encryption, they don't even bother to do that. Now, what about this little snitch application? So in the past, what you could do is you could use little snitch to actually block these connections, as well as a bunch of other connections being made to Apple servers. So like with Microsoft, Apple also has telemetry servers that connect to their operating system. And a lot of people aren't really a fan of having these actually running. So little snitch basically stop that from happening. But in Big Sur, Apple is actually making some changes. In the default configuration of Little Snitch, it blanket allows all of this computer to Apple communication, but you can disable those default rules and go on to approve and deny each of these connections and your computer will continue to work fine without snitching on you to Apple, at least before Big Sur. So the version of macOS that was released today, 11.0, also known as Big Sur, has new APIs that prevent Little Snitch from working the same way. These new APIs, don't permit Little Snitch to inspect or block any OS level processes. Additionally, the new rules in macOS 11 can even hobble VPNs so that Apple apps will simply bypass them. So if you're running one of these apps, it might just ignore the fact that you actually have a VPN running altogether. Patrick Wardle over on Twitter lets us know how this is working. So Trust D, the dame responsible for making these requests, that was the one that was connecting to the OCSP servers is inside of the content filter exclusion list, which is new to macOS 11, which means it can't be blocked by any user controlled firewall or VPN. So any application in this list is just going to ignore your firewall or VPN. So some of the other applications in this list are things like ComCenter, which is used for making phone calls on your Mac, as well as Maps. So both these applications ignore your firewall and VPN, which can potentially compromise your voice traffic and future plan location information. And in the case of maps, that could do something like, say, indicate that you're not going to be in your house from, I don't know, the 22nd of November to the 30th of November or something like that, which obviously says your house is now going to be empty during this time. Now, some people are working on ways to fix this problem. So over on the tinyapps.org blog, there's this basically blog post that shows you one way you could potentially fix it, but there's no guarantee that it's going to continue working. And over on the blog post we're reading here, down the bottom there's a question that says, how do I protect my privacy? And there's an explanation of a way to fix it in there as well. But both of those could very easily be broken by Apple. Basically what I'm saying is don't do anything sensitive on your Big Sur Mac device. Now, you might be thinking, is this as bad as it gets? Nope, it keeps getting worse from here. So those shiny new Apple Silicon Macs that Apple just announced, three times faster and 50% more battery life, won't run anything before Big Sur. And I would hazard to guess that getting Linux running on it is probably going to be a challenge. If someone does it, let me know and I'll happily talk about it. But I imagine that's going to be a bit of a struggle. So these machines are the first general purpose computers ever where you have to make an exclusive choice. You can have a fast and efficient machine or you can have a private one. So short of using external network filtering device like a travel slash VPN router that you can totally control, there will be no way to boot any OS on the new Apple Silicon Macs that won't phone home and you can't modify the OS to prevent this because they use cryptographic protections. Now, if you do want to stop this at a hardware level, probably the easiest way to do so would be something like a pie hole. Your computer now serves a remote master who's decided that they are entitled to spy on you. If you have the most efficient high-res laptop in the world, you simply can't turn this off. Now, I feel like this point right here might be coming from someone who is still a bit of an Apple fan, but I'll let you have that point. So let's not think very much about the fact that through these additional certificate checks, Apple could prevent you from launching any app that they or their government demands be censored.
So let's say, for example, the RIAA lobbies the US government and the US government goes to Apple and says, hey, Apple, you must stop people from running BitTorrent clients. They could very well do this. There's nothing stopping Apple from being able to do this. And what's to say that they don't do it? Or they could stop something like the Tor browser or really anything that governments aren't a big fan of. But you know, Apple, they care a lot about data security and user privacy, except for the fact that uh, Apple dropped a plan for encrypting backups after the FBI complained to them. So, you know, maybe not so much. And they just, you know, backdoored the end-to-end -end cryptography of iMessage. And if you log in with an Apple ID during setup of your device, it will automatically enable iCloud and iCloud backup for you where it will back up all your chat logs. So even if you go and disable this yourself, if the person you're talking to hasn't done so, your chat log is still going to be backed up. And iCloud is going to be encrypted, but Apple actually owns the encryption keys to this so they can decrypt it whenever they feel like doing so. But you know, Apple, they care about security. And here's the thing, maybe one or two of the techie macOS users will stop using macOS after this. So like the programmers or the lecturers, people like that, but I don't expect that to happen. In fact, nothing is going to change because if this video breaks out of my regular audience, what you're going to see happen is people in the comments section are going to be defending this. Now, obviously my regular audience are probably going to be on my side, but the hardcore Apple people, most of them think that Apple can do no wrong whatsoever. Now, I don't, I don't mean everyone who uses macOS. Some of you people are completely reasonable, but the people who are Apple or die, they will defend every action Apple ever takes and every action Apple ever does is always going to be right because Apple has made it. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. Before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Corbinian, Andre, Nathan, Montezar, Chico Bento, Joseph Mitchell, Peter D. Road, Tony, and all of the $2 patrons. And if you want to go support my work, there'll be links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, star, leave a pay, and all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey, Library, and BitChute if you want to watch it somewhere that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.